Yeah. So um, tell me about the time when they actually came for you and uh, I guess booted down your door and said, listen, mate, hands behind. All right, before that, I just want to want to clear things up with the Sammy yeah. the Bull story. Sure, for sure. So for a long time, I thought Sammy the Bull was running this XC ring because everyone was throwing his name out. Yeah. But now I've done this documentary with, you know, my story and Sammy the Bull story that just got put out, Narco Wars. Mm -hmm. What I've learned is Sammy the Bull's, the extent of his involvement in the XC ring was, the evidence against him was, his son called him in the night, mm -hmm. Gerard Gravano, mm -hmm. and they talked about putting money into gas, which means petrol in America, right, but right. it was code for ecstasy. Right. And the bull invested money into the enterprise. Right. Now, the XC ring had been started by a guy called Mike Papa, one of these steroid head guys. Mm -hmm. They had enforcers called the Devil Dogs, who were big guys who beat people up and barked and yelped like dogs while they smashed you. Right. And Gerard Gravano was then brought into this XC ring by Mike Papa. So on the street level, it was Gerard and Mike Papa that were running it. Right. So they were the people who knew we were beefing at the street level. Mm -hmm. Sammy the Bull was not aware of all this shit was going on. He was like a silent partner sort of thing. Yeah, he was an investor. An investor. Okay. Now I thought Sammy the Bull knew what you know what was going on. I thought he was coming after me because people were saying he was coming after me. Mm -hmm. So I infiltrated the house. I had a strip, uh, a stripper woman, infiltrate the house, and she was going to barbecues, and she's describing all these. <laughs> Italian New York guys in the shell suits, yeah. um, going to these barbecues at the weekend and giving me the layout and we did drive-bys of the house and everything. Mm -hmm. Just in case anything ever went down at my house, we knew where the, ha the house was as yes. well. Yeah. My first actual meeting with Sammy the Bull's son was when the guards in the jail, we were all going court and they handcuffed Wildman to Gerard Gravano. Just, I think they just did it to see what would happen. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah, yeah and that's how we met Gerard and he explained his situation to us. Right, right. So, okay, so as far as now, you know, the, the I guess the D, DEA or DA, I'm not, I'm not too familiar with the terms. So now I guess they're coming for you now. So those are yeah, all Yeah, all those agencies are coming for me. It's a multi-agency investigation. Right. And it's May 16, 2002, when I've stopped the importation of XC for a year, I've met a woman, fell in love with her, living yes, in an apartment in yes. Scottsdale, back to stock trading. Um, going to the, the local college to study uh, Spanish and, and the SWAT team kicked my door down. Right, so you actually quit for a year. Quit, in, quit importation, I was quit permanently. We were going to move to LA because right. we knew our history was such, there was so much heat. The lawyer who advised me on, the woman, female lawyer who advised me on bringing the drugs in through Mexico, yeah. she knew someone in the DEA and she says, Sean, they're coming for you. But, but I was also naive to the statute of limitations. Right. I thought they got to come in and find me with drugs. So if I'm not importing, there's nothing they can do. Mm. So even though the heat was building, if I'm not importing and they, there's no drugs in my house, what can they do? Exactly. But that's not the case. If you've got a drug transaction you've done with someone in the last seven years and that person goes to the cops and tells them, They've got a case against a you without, without yeah. the pills. Yeah. It's called the statute of limitations. Right. So that's how they got me. They had 10 witness statements. Okay. And one of them was Skinner. It was my top XC sales guy. Crazy. He ended up in a feud with Wildman to the point where he got so scared of Wildman because Wildman was going to kill him mm -hmm. that he went to the cops. Mm -hmm. And during his feud with Wildman, Wildman was in a federal deportation prison mm -hmm. and Skinner firebombed Wild Woman's place. Crazy. And the firebomb came through the window and just missed Wild Woman and almost set fire to her. Crazy. So Wild Man's like, get me out of this deportation camp. I had a lawyer, an immigration lawyer, and he, he expedited his release. Wild Man came back and he was intent on killing Skinner. Mm. And Skinner got so scared, he went to the cops and left the state. Wild Man found out where he lived mm -hmm. and he's waiting in there for him. And one of my other mates, Joey Crack, who's also dead right now, RP oh, Joey Crack. Joey Crack goes in there. Wild Man thinks it's Skinner. Grab Joey Crack. <laughs> it's me, Joey Crack. Well, man, don't kill me. And he told me when he'd become a cellmate, Joey Crack, because the Italian mafia moved in with me. Joey Crack was like, I thought Wilma was going to kill me that day. He'd been up for like a week smoking crack and crystal meth. His eyes were completely red. <laughs> Crazy. He had every weapon known to man <laughs> laid out in Skinner's apartment <laughs> golf club, hammer, assorted knives. Fucking things, pliers, fucking everything, everything. <laughs>
insane. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's yeah. why that's that's how the whole thing went down. It was a dispute, an internal dispute between Wildman and Skinner. Sure. 